Now, usually I'm reporting from Nairobi, but I've flown into London because I'm here for the first ever FT Africa Summit, and it's being held in London at Claridge's. Now, why is that? It's because some of the money that's interested in investing in the continent is based here, but also it's a thoroughfare for people coming through who want to find out more about prospects in the continent. So I'm here to meet some of the representatives and speakers and find out the future of Africa. What we really should be doing is seeking to better understand Africa and look at the opportunities as well as the risks. So let's start with the risks. We asked investors and policymakers the continent's greatest challenges. Infrastructure. Inequality. It's bad leadership. Logistics and infrastructure. First up, Donald Kabaruka, president of the African Development Bank, who says Africa is short of $45 billion a year when it comes to infrastructure. It costs about 2% of GDP. So which means economies growing at 7% will now be performing at 9%. Now that 2% could make a huge difference as to how fast, how soon we're able to double incomes to eliminate absolute poverty. At the current uh, growth trends, uh, we think poverty can be eliminated in two decades. Not everywhere, but most places. But if we could increase growth rates by 2%, that brings down to almost a decade, 12 years, like many countries in Asia have done. There's been no better example of the idea of a growing Africa in recent years than the mantra of the growing middle class. But that's been starting to change. A few years back, surveys put the middle class at 300 million people. But only this year, a new survey says that's come down to 15 million households. Now, of course, it's calculated differently, but for multinationals who are dipping their toe into Africa for the first time, it's becoming a key litmus test. There's no better example of that than Pizza Hut, the quintessential fast food of pizza, $7 a pop. Now, they've just opened in South Africa this year, and right now they're next month opening in Zambia, and that will be a real test for them. They want to open 45 shops in five years, and as well, they're looking ahead to Kenya and Nigeria. The question is, is anyone going to bite? I think the level of informal economy in Zambia is incredibly high. So I wouldn't take South Africa as a reference point. We have, for instance, a reference point connected to spending on cinema, uh, coffee shops, bakery, retail, and our expectation is that it's going to be a great success. Uh, the key message is GDP per capita is not a good representation whether they're going to be enough consumer spending in the country. There are many other pointers that should be used to understand whether it's a country with capacity or not. Many manufacturers based on the continent are also trying to secure this middle class. Entrepreneur Vilmar Shah, who's head of Bidco, which produces edible oils and detergents and soaps, says adding value is key to growing the economies. I think the greatest opportunity in Africa today is value addition to the raw materials that we have. We've been exporting raw materials in its raw form. We've been exporting cotton to the world. Right now we can send them as shirts. That means processing that product. You know, the spinning, weaving, the, the garment making, four markets in the West. The value addition is about 1,000 to 1,600%. We're already at, from the soil to the frying pan. Whatever the economy is doing, senior officials still have to defend their governments against accusations of corruption and failing to deal with security threats. Nigeria's Ngozi Okonjo Iwela is nevertheless flying her flag high. Accountability is everything. And I don't think that people have to worry. I think Africans themselves are holding gov increasingly holding governments to account and will continue to do so in the future. I think there are some uh, security risks on the continent, but they are, they are overemphasized. Well, there's no doubt that today has been full of sweeteners. Uh, growth is sustained at 5%. You've got record inflows coming in this year. 85 billion dollars everyone's pretty buoyant but at the same time there are plenty of other people who say that we need to stir things up We've got bad leadership poor accountability huge security risks and not only that but economies that are fragile and fail to be underpinned by infrastructure logistics uh, rule of law 
And as African countries struggle to cope with inflows of investment, they're also going to struggle to find a way through and a path to development and overcoming inequality to a sustainable growth. For the Financial Times, this is Katrina Manson in Claridge's Drinking Tea.